What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. I'm working on this kitchen island, but before I wrap this project up, I wanted to show you guys what I did to get the perfect fit on this farmhouse sink. When the full video is done, I'll put a link in the description. Otherwise, click the subscribe and notification bell and YouTube will let you know when it's ready. If this is your first time installing one of these sinks, you might be surprised to discover that they usually aren't square or flat. Even if your sink comes with a pattern, there's a good chance that it won't fit perfect. I started by getting my sink positioned where I wanted. If you're installing your sink on an existing cabinet, you can do this by making a frame that replicates the dimensions of your cabinet out of scrap wood. I'm using a two inch piece of scrap to set how far I want mine to stick out. This will end up being one and a quarter inches from the face frame when it's installed. If you're building your face frames from scratch, make the opening slightly smaller than the dimensions of the sink. Cut some strips out of scrap plywood that are slightly longer than the width of your sink. I used a pin nailer to hold them in place. Just make sure you have all of the shorter nails out before starting. Next, take a couple pieces of scrap plywood and hold them against the side of your sink. Use a pen to mark the outline of the sink by holding it flat against the side. Do this on both sides. There's a lot of different ways you can cut this line, but I found it easiest just to use my belt sander. I just snuck up on the line and kept testing it until it fit perfect. Once I was satisfied, I attached the pieces together using a little bit of CA glue and some more pin nails. It's important to have this top strip in place so that you're referencing the top of your face frame. It will also help keep your pattern square. The final fit is only as good as your pattern, so make sure you're satisfied with it before moving on. Once you are, carefully remove it by pulling from the areas where the pin nails are. Now you can lay this pattern against the face frame. Again, make sure the top is referenced against the top of the face frame. I had a little bit of material to remove, so I started with a jigsaw. I made sure to stay outside of the line and then cleaned it up with a sander. Take your time here and keep checking the fit. It's better to spend a few extra minutes test fitting before removing too much material. Now that the face frame is done, let's move on to the opening for the top. For this pattern, I'm going to use a quarter inch sheet of plywood. You can use other materials like cardboard, but I wanted something rigid and I'll show you why in a minute. I used my track saw to cut it down to the exact size that the butcher block top will be. In my case, it's 72 by 39 inches. Next, I roughly laid out where the opening for my sink needed to be. I used my jigsaw and cut about two inches inside of these lines. My island is actually a peninsula that butts up against the wall. I positioned the pattern where it needed to be and used a pen to trace the shape of the wall. I cut the excess off with a jigsaw. I have the front of the butcher block hanging about three quarters of an inch over the face frame. And now I know what you're thinking. Look at that awesome shirt. I wish I had one of those. Well, I have good news. They're available right under the description for this video or by going to my Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description. Once again, I used my pin nailer to hold the pattern in place. I didn't want this to move around at all while I was tracing the hole for the sink. I wasn't happy with the fit against the wall, so I used some tape to fill in a couple sections. I measured the diameter of my pen and found it to be 0.4 inches. I cut that in half and measured out 0.2 inches from the line that I drew. Then I used a straight edge to connect all of these marks. This is necessary because when I traced the line, it was offset by one half of the diameter of the pen. If this is confusing and you don't have a caliper to measure your pen, just add about a quarter inch to the outside of the line you traced. I find this more accurate than trying to hold the pen at just the right angle so you're tracing the line right along the curved edge of the sink. Basically, you'll end up with something similar to this picture where you have the original line and then one offset a quarter inch to the outside. The blade of my jigsaw is one and a half inches from the side of my base. So I set up a guide with some scrap wood that was one and a half inches away from the line that I needed to cut and used a couple clamps to hold it in place. You can cut the radius for the corner with a jigsaw, but I found it easier to use a one inch Fostner bit. Finish cutting these lines and then check the fitment. The sides of my sink bowed out slightly, so I made a couple marks where I needed to remove some extra material and then use the sander to sneak up on the line. Make sure you leave your butcher block top in the plastic wrapper until you're ready to use it. 
Mine specified that it must be sealed within 48 hours. I marked the side that was going against the wall with a pencil and once again used my jigsaw to cut just outside of this line. I smoothed everything out with the belt sander. Since I already have this nice rigid pattern, I decided to use my router with a couple different pattern bits. I made sure that I have the bottom of the block facing up and screwed the pattern right to it. You can also use double-sided tape, blue tape and CA glue, or clamps to hold this. I just wanted to make sure that it was held flat against the butcher block and didn't move at all. You'll only get one shot at this. If you do use screws, make sure they're short enough so they don't go all the way through the butcher block and that the heads are recessed into your plywood pattern. The first bit cuts about a quarter inch into the surface. I like to use this heavy full-size router instead of a palm router because it's more stable and easier to control. It's very important that you don't tilt the router at all. Next I cleaned up the groove I just cut and used a jigsaw to trim off the rest of the material. Don't worry about making this line perfect, just stay about a quarter inch away from the inside of the groove. If you save this cutoff, it'll make a great cutting board for your significant other. This will make an excellent surprise gift that matches your new countertop. Next I switched to this flush trim bit. I like the spiral cut ones because they give a smoother finish and are easier to control. I'm using the top bearing on this one to follow the cut that I made with the first bit. Once again, test your fit and then use a belt sander or sanding block to clean up your cut. I'll cover finishing and many more things in the complete build video, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell so you'll be the first to know it's available. If it's already out, I'll have a link at the end of this video. Big thank you to my patrons and everyone else who helps support the channel. I just moved into a new house, so that means I've got a bunch of renovation and furniture builds coming. I also have some big stuff coming as far as the CNC router and shop goes. I better get back to work, so I'll see everybody over on this next video. No. Pretty Caroline.